Hi, viewers of Blues Moose YouTube channel, as we call it. Um, welcome. Tonight we had Pat McManus band on band, and wow, what a gig it was. It was two hour power blues, rock, hard rock, fiddle, everything you had. It was, in my book, a taster and a platter of what Irish blues rock has to, to offer. Was that right? Oh, I think so. Uh, it's funny, but I think there's a great tradition of that kind of music uh, that comes out of Ireland. If you, if you look at the great Rory Gallagher, Rory was very um, versatile in, in his style of music, and it went from blue, pure blues to quite heavy rock and, and, you know, guitar virtuoso, and he played the mandolin, the saxophone, multi-instrumentalist. So I think a lot of that, to me, Rory was the first real um, rock star out of Ireland, and uh, he was a legend in Ireland, and, and he paved the way for an awful lot of ba the bands that came afterwards. You know, without Rory's success, the, the, the rest of the world wouldn't have looked at Ireland. But because Rory, he, he blazed the trail first, and he, for me, he was the first true rock star out of Ireland. And so everybody looks up to Rory. So, you know, we had, we had a good master. <laughs> we had a good master. <laughs> but it's not only Rory. I heard some influences from uh, Thin Lizzy also. And you're, you're, you've been around a while. Yes, right. And um, you started out in a hard rock band. Is that true, Mama's Boys? Yes, correct. I started out with my brothers. Uh, that's hence the name Mama's Boys. We were three, three brothers. Tommy was the youngest brother. He was the drummer. And uh, John was the bass player and the lead vocalist okay. and the best looking one. So the whole focus was on him. What happened to those guys? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, Tommy and my brother died of leukemia. Okay. You know, he passed away. Yeah, at 26, he passed away. And uh, John, my brother, then played with Fastway for a while, but the guys at a motorhead. And uh, then he gave up. He doesn't really want to do it anymore. But I, I have a, a love for music that, that never, never stops me. And I, I love playing music. And I sh I've continued to play on and on and on, you know. So after Mama's Born, uh, with a very Irishy feel to it. So yes, the vo vocals were very important on, on those albums, you know. So, uh, but then at the end of that, uh, when, when the album deal finished, I decided to go home to Ireland because I've been living in London for quite some time and I didn't want to continue on doing that again you know the fact that you um, didn't all uh, I guess you like playing big stadiums with all yes. that comes from yes. 50,000 people mm -hmm. around who love your music and yes to an extent but you you play as much yeah. fun and yes. make the audience well to me a happy on this stage were uh, only a couple of few who came to a radio recording yeah it, it seems to me that it doesn't mind to you no uh, and to be honest with you again that corporate thing that whole big stadium thing and people peeing in to see you know it, it becomes um, from my point of view you become very detached from everything it's not it's not what music's about you know I'd rather see the people's faces I'd rather be right in their faces playing that that to me is what music's about and they can feel the energy coming from from the band and the band get the feedback from them they can see the expressions on their faces that to me Absolutely. is well that's what turned me on to music when i first got into rock and roll and went to see bands play it was in a little dark club playing and i just said i want to do this i want to do this this is great you know and so for me this is this is where rock and roll belongs we ask a lot of people the question, what is blues to you? What, do, what is good blues to you? And mostly to say, if you play from the heart, it's good enough. Correct. And I mean, that, uh, that to me... That's, that's written in your answer also. Y yes, very much so. And that's the only way I know how to play. I don't know how to play any other way. I really don't. I, I, I don't uh, calculate it. It's not premeditated. Everything I do is just from there. And sometimes it can be, it can be on the spur of the moment. It can take us off into different tangents. And, and, and to take you off into different areas, but that's spontaneity, and I love that spontaneity. And the blues is very spontaneous as well, believe it or not. It's very spontaneous as regards how you, you play a solo, what you're feeling on the night. It, emotions it trigger off different things. So for me, that's what the blues is about. And it can be happy blues or sad blues. We, uh, we noticed that there are a lot of people who play happy blues and... and can go all ways, but what I love is you, you play different guitars, but there's always there uh, a sound that we recognize somewhere. There's always um, you play a guitar that we heard before, and you do still do you do your own thing with it, and <laughs> that's pretty spectacular because yeah. there what is played has always been played somewhere, we guess. How do you? How do you be yourself? Well, I, I think me personally speaking, I draw an awful lot on, on my traditional Irish influences uh, because uh, I play a lot of folk music as well. And I try to incorporate that into the, into the, into the music as Are well. Are we informed just that you won 
a prize in Ireland for the best fiddler sometime. Oh, that that means something. Ago. That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very young. But I, I teach, um, I teach uh, uh, folk music at home, yeah. and I have a young student who just won the All-Ireland. He's the top fiddle player in Ireland at the moment. So I mustn't have been too bad when I was there. <laughs> I guess I guess in Ireland it's a, a absolutely a, well, a recommendation. Oh, yeah, because it's not just Ireland. They come from America. They come all over to compete in this competition. It's just not Ireland. They come from, from America. They come from France. They come. They come from all over to, to, to enter this competition in All Ireland. They have the different regions, and they all qualify. And then in the All Ireland, they all come to Ireland. And on the day, they all battle it out. So my student won. So I was real proud of him. You know. So he's making records now, and he's only he's only 17. 17. <laughs> yeah. And he can make a living on the music industry. So uh, that, no, he's, he's still at school. <laughs> <laughs> Another question um, that was whispered in my ear was a buddy of mine. He said, when you were playing Mama's Boys, there was someone knocking at your door and asked, can you play in, uh, in a tour with me? And that guy was Phil Linnett. Is that, is that a correct story? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, I mean, we, we first met, I first met Phil Linnett um, when uh, we were doing a festival in Ireland called Listun Varna. And that festival is, um, is um, where a matchmaking festival. Right? For the women. Yes. <laughs> so all the old men that haven't got a, 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 a nice woman, they can go to, to Liston Varna and they'll be matched up. So it was at this festival we met Phil. It was a huge big festival and uh, he, he heard the band play and then he invited us on, the, on their farewell tour. He said, I'd like to help the band. I, I like what I hear and uh, I would like to invite you on the, the Thunder and Lightning tour, which was their final tour. So yes, we did, we did that tour with them. Uh, in 1983. Uh, what, it was not their best tour, as I heard, uh, amongst each other, but it's still, it's Phil Linnet, it's well, Thin Lizzy. Well, it was funny because uh, I'd never seen Thin Lizzy up to that point, <laughs> you know, because they were always our heroes and, 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 and uh, to us they were just awesome every night. Because <laughs> we were fans of the band, you know, and as soon as we packed away our instruments, we would stand in the front of the stage. We got, fr we got front seat every night at the gigs and we did 30 or 40 shows at them <laughs> and we loved every one of them. We thought they were super. You, know? so you get paid for it. And, uh, and we learned a lot from watching Philip. He was, he was an absolute professional. He was a fantastic front man and a really really nice man into the bargain you know so now about Mike Main is 2013 still around and still kicking and touring yeah um, yeah. yeah yeah what would you like most uh, teaching or touring I like the touring there's 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 <laughs> nothing quite like the touring I, 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 I it gives me great pleasure to play to people it's not a megalomaniac thing it's not oh look at me up on stage I, I, I genuinely like playing music because it goes back again to the traditional folk music. We all used to get together to play for the love of the music, not to play for anybody else, but for the love of the music. And we would be all smiles and enjoying the music. And that's the way I treat my, my shows at night, you know. I play because I want to get up and play the music. Well, we, we, we got inspired tonight because everybody in the Blue Smooth crew was a little bit down. We, we all the downfall we had today. And everybody cheered by the first song you played. Well, let's say the second song. Yeah. But enough of that. Um, are you still actively, actively making new songs? Or yes, uh, yes, I record all the time. I, I've made uh, three solo albums and three live DVDs. And uh, I'm currently recording a new album at the moment. And uh, I haven't made up my mind what that album's going to be called yet, but I have five of the tracks started. So throughout the summer and throughout uh, the, when we're not touring, we, we, we sort of fly in and out and you do a lot of festivals in the summertime. I tend to go back to the studio and finish off the work then. So I'm hoping for maybe late summer, early autumn, uh, uh, the new album. Okay, and then you bring always on stage your, your, the violin, the fiddle, mm -hmm. uh, the mandolin, I'm sorry, if, if that's the correct name. The bazooki. Yeah. It's the Greek instrument. That's right, yes. You get them cheap now, I heard. <laughs> that's, that's, why do you think I have it? <laughs> are there any other instruments that are folky you, you, yes, you brought on stage? I play the banjo also, but, but I didn't, I don't, I don't uh, it's too many instruments to bring uh, in the van at a certain level. I play, I play the, the various other instruments I, I, I have a go on, but uh, mostly those primarily are my main instruments, the violin, the bazooki and the guitar. Those are the three instruments I like. Are you still following the, mu the, mu the music scene uh, actively if you're on a festival? You're going to watch out for the youngsters, who is hot and who is not? No, I don't like listening to the youngsters because they're all too hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course I do. Of course I do. They're, they're, it's phenomenal to see such great, great players. People like Kenny Wayne Shepherd and that, they're just 
phenomenal players. Of course, everybody knows Joe Bonamassa, but he's he's a phenomenal player. But there's uh, Ainsley Lister. There's there's uh, uh, the you know there's there's Matt Schofield. They're just the list is endless of great, great, great players. You know. So there's still and future for blues and blues oh, rock. Absolutely, and it'll, it it's one of those. It's it's a music that will never die, because kids are getting turned on to it all the time. You know, and it for me, it's it's it comes from the heart, and there's lots of kids out there that are playing the blues, and, and it's 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 alive and kicking and well. Are you uh, really picky about your instruments? I've seen you kind of brought a couple of guitars, but can you play on anything, or are you say, ah, I I've, I change a lot of on the custom-made guitars because of the new pickups, new strings, and tremolos. Uh, I'm I'm not too bad actually. I uh, I get lots of people who come up with the guitars. Uh, particularly in Ireland, they want me to play it, you know, and just have it to say and they take a photograph and put it on YouTube. So I'll always manage to play it. I'm not that fussy, really. Yes, I, I have a custom, uh, a custom built guitar that I currently use at the moment. And primarily, it's, a, it's called a Vanquish and it's made in Peterborough in England. But the reason I use that guitar is because when I'm flying into festivals, I want one guitar that can do everything. Right. Whereas, yeah. you know, a Strat does a Strat thing, a Les Paul does a Les Paul. Well, that Vanquish covers everything for me, so I don't have to worry about bringing lots of instruments on the aeroplane. So one instrument, the Vanquish, and if I've got that with me, I'm happy. I'm happy. That brings us at a beautiful end of this small and little interview. We're going to make a splendid broadcast uh, show of it, and thank you very much, well, uh, Pat McManus, for having us here. Having us. It was a real pleasure to be here on Blues Moose, and please God, we'll see you all again. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the last question I have, if you want to stay...